Want to hear something weird? This was the mission that first got me into exploring the lore of Ready or Not. Something about seeing such unique and well-equipped enemy variations within a close quarter server farm map just piqued my interest in such a way that not many games have as of late. Regardless, with Minejot being briefly discussed in many of my prior videos, I felt like it was finally time to do a deep dive into the data center and attempt to figure out just what is happening here. Welcome to the Ready or Not Lore series, where in today's episode we will be discussing the mission, Sinuous Trail. This video will be divided into two sections, the first being all in-game slash developer confirmed information, and the second being my own theory as to what is happening. If you'd wish to jump to a specific section, there will be timestamps in the description. data storage facility is one of the last remaining centers still operating for Minejot, a company that now provides the outsourcing of trade workers to workforces within Los Sueños. However, Minejot was once known for being a platform where people can voice their opinions anonymously, avoiding punishment from the police and the public. Due to the lack of socioeconomic stability in Los Sueños, Minejot quickly grew in necessity. At one point in time, Minejot became responsible for facilitating the outsourcing of work for almost half of the city's developmental projects. Another key factor in Minejot's success was its utilization of cryptocurrency, which proved to be an advantage when the value of the dollar began to waver. Their success quickly took a turn for the worst as larger companies began to lobby for industry change. A once strong and respectable company, Minejot became a joke overnight. Following the collapse, Minejot turned once again into a hub for the anonymous illegal trade of various listings. Los Sueños Criminal Investigation Division found evidence of prostitution, trafficking, and exploitation within Minejot's online servers and employees. The individual identity of these users have proven to be difficult to identify due to the extensive use of VPNs. Following the conviction of a pedophile, investigators were able to link the distribution of explicit CP to Minejot. Arriving on the scene, we quickly discover this place is a shell of its former self. Out front in the toll booth, we see a calendar that states this mission takes place in August with the 25th circled for some reason. Crudely written on a large sheet states PCs slash servers for sale. Following its instructions, we find a mixture of new and broken servers just out in the open next to piles and piles of trash with graffiti sprayed about. Taking a closer look at these servers, we can see Chinese text written on the side. When translated, they come out as new technology only for you, new computerized lemon chicken. I don't know if that was a joke on the developer's part or Google Translate being stupid. There are more. Come every weekend for amazing sales. Buy three products, get the first half price. Computer World, the new server database is $2.99 per month and the line is now only for a limited time. Tech Now tally the latest tech gadgets for you. Technology now is the latest technology product for Nile legs. Also might be a translation issue. And technology and more. We get a little more context as to why there are Chinese servers all over the place by reading emails scattered around the map. To all Minejot employees, due to the continuous fall in our stock prices, we find ourselves crippled financially speaking and unable to pay our rent or employees much longer if this current trend keeps up. Therefore, the directors and myself have made an executive decision effective immediately to take some drastic actions in regard to our current server hardware. As many of you know, we have upwards of 500 top of the line spec servers, which whilst stable are incredibly expensive to run at full capacity. Therefore, we have made a decision to sell off every one of these servers and replace them with a cheaper foreign market variation. In theory, yes, these servers are of lesser quality and prone to errors and crashes. However, they cost a fraction of the price to buy and run with the hopes that the money we gain in selling the others will help us limp along for a few more months. Tell your friends and anyone you know looking, we have decent servers that we are looking to sell wholesale. We have some PCs and chairs for sale too. Reginer Block Anderson, Chief Systems and Network Director. So basically, Minejot is cutting corners. 
They're going bankrupt and losing a ton of money due to falling stock prices and the pressure put on them by larger companies. They then do the only thing they can do to stay afloat and buy cheap. In order to keep their doors open just a little longer, they start to sell off all their old top of the line servers and replacing them with cheap and poorly made knockoffs. For a company that prides itself on its security of data, this is a horrible decision that I'm sure is a key factor leading to the raid in the first place. Stepping inside, we find this place absolutely littered with MindJot private security. The MindJot security team is well-trained, professional, and equipped with bleeding-edge gear. I mean, shit, look at these guys. They look like they'd be cosplaying in reinforced Mark II combat armor. We see they come equipped with weapons such as MP9s, ARs, and UMP45s, just to name a few. The MindJot security team is extremely well compensated to ensure that their client's information, no matter what it may be, is safeguarded from any threat. Because to them, information is more valuable than gold. While exploring this facility in the lobby by the front desk, we see a multitude of magazines thrown about. They read, The History of the USIA, a catalog of the agency's use of field agents. For those of you who don't remember, the USIA is the shady, in-universe version of the CIA we covered in the last episode. Gonzalo Quintana Organization, the something can't really make it out of life amidst crime and calamity. I have a pretty strong feeling this will tie in some way to the upcoming map Coyote, or sorry, Coyote for some of you people who say it wrong, as it seems like this magazine has something to do with the cartels, and that map will also most likely have some ties to cartels. Moving along, we have Tech Watch, Corporate America, Downtown Los Sueños, a filthy part of town, dangerous, unremarkable, would you go alone? The Golden Age of Computing, How Data is Sold and Why You Should Care, has the Silicon Valley of Los Sueños dried up, how America is something, can't make it out, to drones, cybersecurity and how it can hurt you, why you should drop out of college, now, the sexiest man alive, millions donated to children's hospitals globally, he's the kindest heart I know, and a masterful lover. Meet Nobot, he is coming for you. Can bots make good friends? Why books hurt your brain? How to dig a hole, are they listening? Big tech's evolution in America, how your future is dictated by the furry fandom. Where do babies really come from? How to get unlimited storage for your MindJot account. MindJot, the rise and fall of privatization. Also included, week 35 of the trash walk-off. There's also one more magazine in the bathroom that states, MindJot's generational legacy. How an internet empire was formed. Gore videos and their impact on our youth. Monopolies in Western America. Why nuclear power is bad for big oil. How to cool your PC with various sundries. While a few of these are obviously jokes, some of these magazines actually tell us a lot. This seems to be more evidence to suggest a tech boom is indeed coming as I've theorized in prior videos. However, MindJot clearly won't be joining anyone in this revolution. We also get some really important information about the timeline of events with the magazine stating it's been 35 weeks since the trash walk-off. If this map takes place in August and this issue is up to date, which it most likely is because math, then we can pretty much assume that the sanitation worker strike started at the beginning of the year in January. By the way, no need to keep track of all the dates. After I finish going through all of the missions, I'll make a video about the timeline of events and how to play the missions in order. Moving behind the front desk, we see a very strange picture stating, if you see this man, he is not police. Call 911 immediately. Who this is, I have no idea, but this just goes to show how crime comes in every shape and form in Los Sueños. Next to this, we see a computer monitor displaying reports of a streamer being swatted, which is a reference to the real horrific quote-unquote prank people do to a lot of streamers. Basically, viewers learn the address of a streamer and then call in a fake threat to get the SWAT team to go to their house and disrupt the stream. This is obviously horrible and extremely dangerous because people have been killed because of it. And if you've done this, you could go f yourself. Anyway, moving into the back, we see the kitchen, and there are really only two things of note here. First, there's an interactable floating keycard here, as well as back at the front desk. We can pick them up, but currently, as far as I can tell, you can't do anything with them. I'm sure they'll be of some importance in a future update, but as for now, they're just hanging there. Literally. Also found in the kitchen, as well as multiple locations all throughout the map, is this newspaper from 1997 that reads, Market investment at big risk coldest day on record, and if you look really carefully at the bottom right, you can find text that reads, there are special little surprises hidden all throughout the scene. You really have to keep your eyes peeled to see it all. I see you, Void. I see you.
Moving along to the admin's room, we find an arcade cabinet playing a very retro game called Ready or Not, as well as some kind of gaming console. We also see the heads of Mindjot and the fucking humunculi they employ. I mean, Jesus, look at these guys. Weaving through the server farm, there also isn't much, just multiple servers and tight corridors that make an ambush very easy. Besides being really cool and really stressful in a combat situation, there isn't much to go on here. Moving up to the second level, we find the main office where I assume most employees worked. While most monitors display the email I previously mentioned about selling servers, there's one here that actually shows an email from HR that states, Dear Mindjot Employees, As we all know by now, it has been an incredibly hard road for the company over the past few years. The profits of the company have rapidly declined, and as a result, we have taken drastic actions to cut the number of vital staff needed. And whilst the monthly paychecks may be a little late, we are doing our best to ensure the survival of the company. In other news, please be aware that we are currently investigating whomever Zero is and the related graffiti in the bathroom. There will be serious consequences to follow. As some of you may know, Egos on the second floor has taken sick and we are wishing him a speedy recovery. A collection will be going around soon for a get well hamper. Employees are reminded that even though we have a reduction in staff, please be aware that you still have to respect the rules of the car park, and any cars that are not properly parked and the spaces provided are subject to being towed. We have also been made aware of the rat problem. With the city's cuts to trash removal services, the problem has been made much worse, and as a result, we have been informed by IT that servers 812, 4201, and 93 have been destroyed due to chewed circuit boards and cables. These will be added to the pile of broken servers we currently have. Please be careful when handling them as rats carry diseases. This actually sheds a lot of light on the current state of everything. Mindjot is clearly hurting, but this just seems to sum it up. Their quality of life at Mindjot has deteriorated so much that rats have now started destroying servers, costing them even more thousands. This is obviously a result of the sanitation worker strike hitting the city, but a company of Mindjot status should be able to pay for pest control. But the fact that they can't, but are also laying off multiple employees, says their days are numbered. And I'm sure, after this mission and the accusations levied against them, Mindjot is most likely dead. Turning around from this HR email, we can actually find Egos, the sick employee's desk. Luckily, this means he wasn't present during the raid and is most likely still alive. Other than that, that's basically all that can be found here. There's nothing of note on the roof and everywhere else is just repeated assets, so let's just move on to the theory. Okay, so this isn't going to be a super in-depth theory today because there's really not a lot to work with. I guess the first main thing is let's talk about Mindjot. Trying to understand this company was difficult. The way I see them is they're like a hybrid between Indeed and Twitter, kinda. With Mindjot, people can find work, but also chat anonymously, which seems counterproductive because you'd really want to know who you're hiring, so it's no wonder Mindjot failed. So I take it that when finding jobs started to get tough, Mindjot's employment side rose to prominence. But when bigger companies rallied against them, their social media side rose to prominence. I'd really like to know more about how they operate, what they do, or if I'm getting all of this wrong. They're such an interesting company, but there's really not much to go by. The other thing I wanted to talk about is all the newspapers laying around. It's kind of weird, right? Why would this modern tech company have multiple 25-year-old newspapers just lying around? A part of me wonders if they found these old newspapers talking about market investments at big risk to see what others did in the past to potentially save themselves in the present. Maybe a company was going through the exact same thing Mindjot is going through and the admin came in with a big pile of these newspapers and passed them out to the remaining employees and said, study this shit and f figure out how to save us. Or something along those lines. Other than that, there's really not much to theorize about here. I have a pretty strong feeling that this is part of a much larger story. As the mission briefing stated, following the conviction of a pedophile, they were able to hone in on Mindjot. This pedo is either George Brixley from the talent agency or Amos Vol from the porn star mansion. In the next two episodes, we'll be covering those missions to get a more clear vision of what exactly is going on here, so be on the lookout for that. Regardless, we have a somewhat better understanding of Mindjot now, and I'm sure this is definitely not the last time we'll see them.